book of Acts, chapter number 20, page 904 in our church Bibles. Now, many of you know that the book of Acts, of course, is uh, Luke part 2. It is the gospel according to Luke, uh, continuing into uh, the season and the time of the first generation of disciples who had just heard and experienced the words of Jesus, the encounters with Jesus, and uh, we see a whole lot of great transitions, hopefully, uh, that have taken place throughout this book. Uh, the book started out with a bunch of disciples, uh, some of whom may have been scared and nervous, all in an upper room waiting for power from God to come. And uh, we see the Holy Spirit came and turned 120 scared folk into some of the most bold radicals uh, that would eventually turn the world upside down. We see them uh, making their way uh, throughout parts of Jer Jerusalem and Judea. And we see that most of the uh, first chapters of the book of Acts were all uh, built around the experiences and the testimonies of Peter. If you remember, Peter was one of these disciples who actually denied Jesus and, you know, uh, said he didn't know who Jesus was. Uh, but uh, Jesus gave Peter a second chance, and Peter became one of the most important early church figures in the uh, New Testament. And around about several chapters ago, uh, the book of Acts made transition from just focusing on Peter to now focusing on Paul. Many of you may remember that Paul uh, was one of these fellows who was a bad actor, praise God. Uh, Paul's old name was Saul. Saul. All right, thank God for a few folks that didn't pay attention. All right. Saul, his name was Saul, and Saul was a hitman. And then Saul was hired by the Jewish leaders of the day to uh, go out and kill Christians, kill those who were followers of the way, the followers of Jesus. And Saul, uh, in the course of him going to kill some folk, Jesus gives him one of our services called a divine interruption. And, and gives him a whole new kind of orientation around his own identity and his own purpose. And Paul, Saul became Paul, and the rest of the book of Acts is pretty much now telling the story of Paul and all of his journeys of, of, of spreading the good news, but also the encounters he has had with folk. And uh, one of the great things about I think this series of being a revolutionary uh, follower of Jesus, if you will, is that uh, God always chooses the folk that people uh, would otherwise kind of discard or count out. Amen. How many know God don't start with perfect folk? Amen. Yeah. God starts with us wherever we are, and uh, He hangs out with us wherever we may go, and He just, you know, keeps chilling with us until we get it together. And uh, here we find Paul uh, engaging in ministry along the course of his life. And we'll pick up this passage in Acts chapter 20, verse number 7. The words of Scripture say that on the first day of the week, which would be Sunday, uh, when we met to break bread, Paul was holding a discussion uh, with them. And since he intended to leave the next day, he continued speaking until midnight. There were many lamps in the room upstairs while we were meeting, and a young man named Eutychus was sitting in the window. He began to sink off into a deep sleep while Paul talked still longer. So overcome by sleep, he fell to the ground three floors below and was picked up dead. But Paul went down and bending over him, took him in his arms and said, Do not be alone. For his life is in him. Then Paul went upstairs. After he had broken bread and eaten, he continued to converse with them until dawn. And then he left. Meanwhile, they had taken this boy alive and were not a little comforted. This is the word of God. For us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. So uh, I am convinced that one of the great uh, needs for all of us who are children of God, following revolutionary ways of God, is that we must learn how to bounce back. That part of what it means to be a successful follower of Jesus is to bounce 
back. And that's what we'll talk about today, uh, learning to bounce back. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that's been read. For us, the people of God, we ask you to hide this word in our heart so we will not sin against you. Please send your anointing. And may his preaching and teaching easy that rest upon me and even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, bounce back. Tell them bounce back. Bounce back. Now, uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful blessing uh, to be fully aware of the kind of limitations that we all have as human beings. That in many cases, uh, to be human is to go through hardships and difficulties. That none of us are kind of slide through life untouched and uncovered by uh, just the experience of day-to-day -day struggle. Uh, that all of us in here, uh, no matter how holy and sanctified you are or how much of a sinner dog you may think you are, that all of us in here got trouble that's either coming, trouble that's here, or trouble that just left. Somebody say amen. <laughs> And one of the great uh, uh, things about being human is that we all have built within us some kind of capacity to bounce back, to recover from setbacks, to recover from challenges and mistakes and problems and issues. And this is, I think, one of the great kind of testimonies of the human enduring spirit. That a lot of us, if not all of us, are aware of our ability to push through hardship. And we come from people, from ancestors. All of us, no matter what your racial background is, if you go back far enough in your history, you will find that uh, your people had to endure some hard stuff in order to get you here today. That nobody kind of rolled through history on a silver spoon, even though folks may want you to think they did. That all of us have had to endure something. But it is also the case that uh, the human spirit and the human uh, body, if you will, can only take so much pressure before it begins to grow. That while we may have within us the ability to bounce back and to recover, that sometimes you hit your limits as a human being. Amen. You know, you've got folks say this is the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. You know, it's like, hey, it's up, you can have bushels of straw on your back. But one little, little straw. Because some of y'all be like, you know, all right, you get on my... Last nerve. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my first nerve, right? My first nerve was, you know, was gotten on a long time ago. So like, and then it's something that the person that gets on your last nerve may not be the same person who got on your first nerve. That there is a cumulative effect mm -hmm. of trouble. And it is then no surprise, it should not be a surprise to any of us, that when people hit their breaking point, we all do things that are not healthy. Right. So we look at the world today, we see addiction just out of control. We see depression, and we see violence, we see all kinds of things that if people were not at their breaking point, I don't believe they would be willingly engaging in. But sometimes you get to a breaking point, and then there's no excuse, and it's just a fact of being human that when you break, I mean, you know, you can find yourself doing things that you would not do if you weren't broken. Amen. Mm. Some of you would be with some of the folk you got with if you was not broken. Some of you wouldn't be puffing puff and passing. Hello, <laughs> somebody. Somebody's for your cataracts. No, you, you broke it. <laughs> Some of us drink and we self medicate, we shop and we, we eat and we do all these things because we are past the point of our own human power to handle what's happening in our lives. But what? Need to be reminded 
is that God is always waiting for us as human beings to remind ourselves that there are many things, not some things, there are say everything that is outside your ability to handle on your own. Yeah. That, you know, the scripture says I can do all things, but it don't just stop right there. Right. A lot of folk today in modernity, post-modernity feel like that as human beings we have evolved to a place where we don't need anything but ourselves. Mm. And I find that when you get everything but God, you usually lose everything and go back to God. Eventually. It's so interesting, you know, as we engage in all these national issues, uh, when tragedies and trials come, people who don't even believe in God start asking, where is God? Right. Right. But in the middle of all your prosperity, you don't seem to think that God is anywhere in, you know, your, your, your tool kit, so to speak. I want to submit to you, child of God, to part of what you and I, as followers of Jesus, people who are engaging in this act, and work of living according to his ways must never forget is that you never are at a place where the power of God cannot sustain, support, redeem, and help and cause you to bounce back. Amen. Now, I want to be very verbose with this point. I don't want it to be too kind of uh, 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 timid this morning because I know, just as someone who's been walking with Jesus for a little while here, uh, that you can be very much in the routine of life, the routine of practicing religion and faith, and you forget how important it is for you to be fully dependent on God. Amen. And not yourself. Not your money. And not your education. And not your intellect. Not your friends and your boo and, and your degrees and, and, and your house and your car. Uh, that sometimes you can get so caught up in your own routine that you forget that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side. Yes. Amen. Even with everything you got, you still be a piece of work. Mm -hmm. yes. The PCM is jacked up. You know, jacked up. Amen. And, 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 and it is important for you uh, to never forget that as you walk with God, that you will find circumstances that will cause you to feel defeat. Kind of like my 49ers did last week. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But how do you know, like they will today, <laughs> that God always causes us <laughs> Yeah, 
almost run you out of town. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, you get up since like this, oh, you know, not, not like our sister Ashley, I don't know if you saw her ex back there this week. You know, you know, so, you know, you see you performing on American Idol and you do performance and they just boo you off the stage. And every time you, you perform it, you just boo, 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 boo. You want to feel good about yourself. And that's what Paul, Paul's doing what he's supposed to do and he gets right out of town. According to the world, Paul was on the losing streak. But Paul never stopped doing the will of God. And this is what I think it means for us to bounce back. That even in the middle of your struggle, yeah. you can keep doing the will of God, and you doing the will of God accelerates your bounce back performance. Paul is here in another city, and he's only staying through the night, and he's teaching and he's preaching up in this room. And there's a room filled with disciples, and the scripture says that in this room, they are all going and doing an all night prayer meeting. How many of us ready for us to do another all night prayer meeting one day? Amen. Not today, we don't get worried. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to be talking, amen, till the sun come up. Amen. I'm not getting inspired by this passage. Somebody say, I'm already tired of hearing myself talk. Amen. So I'm not going to do that, but, but Paul and they have an all night meeting, and, and it is very clear that.
the church on his way to sleep, but he was in the building. There I say, out the way, 1305 University Avenue, Berkeley, California, 94702, at 12.05 p.m. on September something, 2013. What is it that causes you and I to fall asleep? Some of us got boyfriends and girlfriends that have put us to sleep. Some of us have depression and abuse that weigh down on us and cause such fatigue that it puts us to sleep. Some of us have friends or family members that put us to sleep. Some of us love church business and politics and hypocritical folk and all the things that are wrong with church will put us to sleep. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves sleepwalking right into the lake of fire. Part of what I want to submit to you, child of God, is that if you're going to bounce back, you and I have to be willing to push back against the forces that seek to put us to sleep. Because if you allow, and if I allow, these things, sin, depression, hurt, pain, and abuse to put us to sleep, how do you know you can sleep right through your blessings? You can sleep right through your opportunities. You can sleep right through your deliverance. You can sleep right through the space and the place where God is designing a new way for you to live and to move and to exist according to his ways. That for us, bouncing back against sleep is an important, uh, it's an important uh, uh, enterprise that we must participate in. Now, be clear, some of us can be put to sleep and you're not going to be able to just bounce back on your own. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, you know, uh, how many know there's certain things that contribute to you falling asleep? I can remember when I was driving across country and I come back from Duke and I would just be tired and sleepy. I didn't turn up the heat because that would assist in me falling asleep. I had to pull off even a big juicy steak and dinners because that, that would give me even more of the hype, praise God. And I and I, I would find myself even more asleep. But when I became asleep, or when I became sleepy, I would run out my windows, turn on the air conditioning, I would stop and rest a little while, walk around. Sometimes I get so desperate that I give me a big two little thing of mouth food or jokes or something. And I just drink it and, and that thing would just give me a whole new set of energy. Why? Because if I did not give a new thing, put something new in my body, then the power of sleep would overtake me. And I'm here to tell you today, some of us need to start to look around for something new to inject into our situation and into our system. Because what we're participating in right now is having the effect of putting us to sleep. And I hear God saying that you can't be asleep while it is daytime. But while the time is now, you must remain awake. So you can do the work and the will of God. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them to stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. And understand, child of God, that when you learn to stay awake, you allow yourself to be aware of all the ways that God will move. And I'm here to tell you that God wants to move. God wants to surprise you while you are awake. God wants to surprise you while he has your attention. Anybody ever been surprised by God when you least expect it? Uh, you know, you know, I, I, I can't imagine that many of us can sleep through a whole lot of things. But I, I, I know that sometimes I got to put that, that my iPhone alarm right next to my ear. So when it goes on, you know, I'm jumping out the bed, I think the whole world's crashing down. But it brought me out of my sleep. And I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to put a blessing on. I'm getting ready to put my spirit. I'm getting ready to put a surprise in your life that will cause you to stay awake. are giving to us as a gift is you can see in the window clearly the brother using bad judgment because if you're sleepy the last place you should be sitting is in a window and not just a window like on the first floor but you sleep in a window on the third floor and it just speaks to me that sometimes 
and shake off some of these things that have been holding us down and shake off some of these habits that continue to get us in some situations and shake off some of these uh, ways of living that continue to put us in situations where God is trying to set us free. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them it's time for you to shake some of this stuff off. It's time for you to get loose so you can be who God has called you to be. It's time for you to bounce back. Yeah. And if you don't bounce back, child of God, then you're going to miss out on a great kind of a blessing that God wants to bring into your life. I know when you get into a situation when you fall down, uh, the easy thing is just to stay there and to lick your wounds and to feel like the world is coming to an end. But how many of you know that a child of God can't stay on the ground?
with everybody else. The Bible says that when Paul lifts up this young man and says there is life still in him, all them devil folks were still right there. Paul went on doing what he was doing. Why? Because Paul believed that what he said was true. Paul didn't need to hang around to see if it was going to happen. Why? Because Paul already was convinced that the same God could raise him from the dead. And the scripture says when this young boy was picked up alive, everybody else around him left away filled with joy and comfort. Could it be that God may have you in that falling down situation? Because there's some faith that God wants to be in the folks around you when you bounce back from your situation. God wants to use your life as a testimony. And I want to let you know that there's some folk who ain't going to know anything about this God we serve. Unless they see the God in you. Unless they see the delivering power in you. Unless he sees, they see that God can redeem you and bring you back from situations that everybody else counted you out for. Child of God, it's time for you to bounce back. That's right. It's time for you to shake off the condemnation. It's time for you to shake off the anxiety and the worry. It's time for you to make some decisions and some choices about how you're going to live differently. It's time for you to get out the window. Amen. If you don't fall asleep, please go find you a bed. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you are falling asleep and falling down there. Are two different things. Hallelujah. Yeah. At least if you fall asleep, you're going to wake up again. And if you get in that flow, yeah. amen, your likelihood of getting up, you're going to need the Paul and the Holy Ghost and the whole lot of power. Amen. To bring you back. And some of us need to ask God, Lord, give me the ability to see life in the middle of my death field situations, my hardship, my difficulties, help me to see beyond my circumstance. Even if I've got to learn from this thing, help me to come out and still feel with joy, still feel with wisdom, still feel with power. You can give me one more high five and tell them bounce back, bounce back, bounce back, bounce back. Stand with me everyone as we can.